Okay, no trip to Boston would be complete without a visit to the original Cheers Bar. Its real name is the Bull and Finch, but its location and ambiance were the inspiration for the TV show of Cheers, which ran from 1982 to 1993, and probably will run forever in reruns. It was the place where everybody knows your name. The show earned 28 Emmy Awards and its cast became legend in the realm of TV sitcoms. It seems that the Bull and Finch Bar was chosen out of a phone book by the Hollywood producers, and the bar's owner agreed to allow a crew to film several inside and outside shots for one dollar. Oh, There are many ways of getting into and around downtown Boston. Each day, thousands of people make use of the MBTA, the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority. Here we see the arrival platforms at North Station, which just happened to be connected to one of Boston's premier sports venues, the Boston Garden. <laughs> Of course, many commuters and visitors prefer to drive in town. There are two interstate highways that intersect here, I-90 east and west, and I-93, which runs under Boston via the famous Big Dig project. There are also ferry services to bring people in and home again from the Massachusetts North and South Shores. Boston has the oldest subway system in North America, but that doesn't mean it's an outdated operation. The cars and stations are very modern. Unlike the subways in most cities, which run in a straight line, the tracks have to follow the twists and turns of Boston's overhead streets, former cow paths. So there's much squealing and squeaking of wheels on the sharp turns. Boston is also renowned for its diversity and excellence of eating and drinking establishments. Durgan Park Restaurant, founded 183 years ago, seats its customers at long communal tables and serves a prime rib bigger than the huge plate it rests on. In the old Quincy Market building, there are restaurants to fit every taste and pocketbook, with seafood being a specialty. The building attracts 18 million locals and tourists annually. And the colonnade includes 35 food stalls along its length. The second floor rotunda also features old market signs and a photographic exhibit showing the history of the marketplace.
The Bell in Hand pub claims to be the oldest in the U.S., but I'm not sure that's accurate. My town has one that dates from 1640. Boston has some very old and popular Irish pubs, some that played a part in the American Revolution. Let's visit Tennessee's, where a friend of mine, Jeff Fraser, entertained on Friday evening. Right in the middle of downtown Boston is its most prestigious neighborhood, Beacon Hill. It was, and is still in some sense, the home of the upper crust of Boston society, the Boston Brahmins. It's where the Cabots speak only to the Lodges, and the Lodges speak only to God. Along Beacon Street there are townhouses with doorways which exemplify the breeding and success of the inhabitants. The brick homes along these streets are some of the most picturesque in Boston. And at the very top of Beacon Hill is the magnificent Massachusetts State House, designed by architect Charles Bullfinch in 1798. It is on land once owned by John Hancock. It is an impressive building, both on the outside and inside, with a dome capped in 23 karat gold. The visitor enters the building through Nurses Hall, and then into Doric Hall, a room dominated by 10 massive Doric Greek columns. The hall is outfitted entirely in marble, and in its vast cavernous space is the grand staircase in a carved, lighted ceiling. Then through a triple archway into the Hall of Flags, A look upward reveals a beautiful golden dome. At the end of the room is another impressive staircase, which leads up to the third floor, where the governor's office and the House of Representatives are located.
Let's head over to Charlestown to visit Old Ironsides and the Charlestown Navy Yard. So where are we going to enter today? You're going to enter the Charlestown Navy Yard. All right, and what's here? Um, we have the USS Constitution, we have the USS Cassin Young, the Constitution Museum, and the Charlestown Navy Yard Visitor Center. Thanks a lot. The USS Constitution is the oldest commissioned warship still afloat in the world. Its initial launch was in 1797. George Washington had ordered six warships to be built to protect the newly formed United States. The Constitution was one of them. It was during the War of 1812 when the ship picked up the nickname of Old Ironsides when she defeated four British frigates. The ship is still taken to sea once a year to be turned around so as to weather evenly on both sides. During the 174 year history of the Charlestown Navy Yard, hundreds of ships were built, repaired and modernized including the World War II destroyer, the USS Cassin Young. The Navy Yard was built on what was once Mouton's or Morton's Point, the landing place of the British Army prior to the Battle of Bunker Hill. It was one of the first shipyards built in the new United States. Today, 30 acres of the Navy Yard are preserved by the National Park Service as part of the Boston National Historical Park.